my god. So... Hello. Greetings, Fujifilm users. P-H-U-J-I-F-I-L-M. There we go. Fujifilm. <laughs> this is a video that... You know, I've made a lot of lens videos for Fujifilm and certainly so for Nikon. And I just realized that I've not made this video and I keep getting asked to make this video. What are the best prime lenses for Fujifilm? Let me first start off by saying that I own every Fujifilm lens that they make currently. So, some of them I have multiple copies of. Uh, don't ask me why, I have no idea. Um, anyway, so... Now, where do you cut off the limit? You know, it's like, well, top three, top two, top five. Well, I've limited it to five. I guess you could say, well, what about top three? I'm not going to place them in any particular order. Obviously, each one of these has its own specific use. So let's start in no absolute specific order. Now, this lens, the 16 millimeter, which is Fujifilm's best lens, period. It's like, well, that's your belief. No, it's, it's Fujifilm's best lens. The 16 millimeter f1.4. Now, it does not come with this all metal lens hood which is made by Fujifilm for the 16 millimeter it's uh, slightly expensive so it doesn't come with this this is Fujifilm's best lens um, this is one of the last uh, well last year anyway one of the last lenses I had to acquire from Fujifilm and it was incredibly shocking I named it lens of the year for 2016 didn't I I can't remember it's been so many years now um, best lens of the year along with a couple other lenses so um, perfect for street, perfect for landscape. Now you're looking at, uh, what, 24 millimeter field of view equivalent on a crop sensor when you're looking at the 16 millimeter. You can also use it for pseudo macro. You can get in really, really close to the 16 millimeter. This is uh, basically my favorite lens from Fujifilm. But also, obviously, we can't say, well, best dependent upon what. I mean, what exactly it is that you like to shoot? Um, so I've actually made this top five lenses. And one of these is not a Fujifilm lens, even though it's a Fujifilm mount. And I'll tell you the reason I chose this one over the Voigtlander. And it's for a specific reason, even though the Voigtlander 58mm Noctone is incredible. Since there are a lot of really awesome adapted to non-Fujifilm lenses. But let's go on to the 56mm f1.2. Um, this is basically the equivalent of an 85mm 1.4. You actually have to have it at uh, 1.2 to get the same bokeh effect as an 85mm at 1.4. Incredible lens. Neither one of these are fast. And both of these have stepper motors, which is not a fast autofocusing system. But when it comes to using the 16mm or using the 56mm 1.2, we're not talking about speed as a concern. N none of these have a vibration reduction on them. So Fujifilm's fastest lens and very arguably, easily, arguably, their sharpest lens. Actually, it's my position that this is Fujifilm's sharpest damn lens. And with quad linear autofocus motors, this is, period, Fujifilm's fastest damn lens. Now, on a lens of size, you think it would have vibration reduction, but it absolutely does not. However, this lens is incredible. Someone sent me this lens. I don't think it was Fujifilm, but I got sent this lens anonymously by somebody, so I didn't have to pay for this lens. I have no idea who sent it. Anyway, it's the 90mm F2 Fujifilm. Which one of these in which order? Well, that depends. I mean, this specifically is for portraiture. This is also for portraiture. You're looking at, what, um, 140 millimeters, right around there, equivalent field of view. So perfect headshot lens. Same as 135 millimeter portrait slash uh, headshot lens um, in a full frame. So no particular order, but uh, these are the top three in no particular order. The one lens I protested the most on actually getting because I've got like over 60 50 millimeter lenses, literally, which is ridiculous. And I do have the 35 millimeter f2, and I have the thir uh, the 23 millimeter uh, f2. So like I said I have every Fujifilm lens. This is, by the way, the best lens for micro contrast. It actually has the best rendition for black and white, since I guess that asked that question quite frequently. Also, it's the 50 millimeter f2. I was extremely I wasn't ticked off, but I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, you know, another 50 millimeter lens. But there's actually a reason behind that. Every camera company, they stake their reputation. This is a crop sensor lens, so a 75 millimeter field of view equiv. But every camera company, whether it's crop sensor or full frame, doesn't matter, has to have their own unique 50 millimeter. 
and uh, whether it was Pentax or Nikon or Canon, it has been this unwritten law, and this is not my opinion, it's a fact, there's been this unwritten law that every camera company has to come out with a 50 millimeter, even though the market is saturated with a bazillion different varieties of 50 millimeters. Every camera company and their new camera system, Pentax, Canon, Nikon, including Fujifilm, has to come out with a 50 millimeter focal. Doesn't matter if it's for crop sensor or otherwise. And so this was Fujifilm's answer, and they did nail it. Um, so this does fall within the top five lenses. I was extremely adamant about not even messing with this lens since I've got so many bazillion 50 millimeters, but it is an incredible lens. Now you're going to ask on this fifth lens, since it's the Miticon 35 millimeter f0.95, it's like, well, you know, this is an adapted lens. No, it's not actually, not in this case. It's a non Fuji lens, excuse me. And it is a Fuji X mount lens. Like, well, why choose this over like an adapted lens like the Voigtlander 58 millimeter 1.4? Well, that's an incredible lens. It is really incredible. Why would I not include that? Because, by the way, whether it's crop sensor or full frame, 35 millimeter in this case, a 50 millimeter field of view, is universally useful for countless things. That, given the fact that I reviewed this lens like a week and a half ago, it's all manual focus, Fuji X mount. It, its build is a 10 out of 10. Its sharpness is a 10 out of 10. Its bokeh is like a 9.5 out of 10. The only thing better than it so far as brilliant, stunning bokeh, just like old time, real deal bokeh. Oh my god, I love this lens so much. Miticon deserves uh, what's Zhang Yi optics. <clears throat> I don't read uh, Mandarin Chinese, but you could see it says right there, Zhang Yi. They really deserve an award for this lens. And this is version 2. Uh, you'll find a couple negative reviews about this lens, but that is version 1 of this lens. After that got some people having a hissy fit about the lens. That's not sharp enough. They redesigned the lens. And this is the Mark II, or the version 2. Incredible. 55 millimeter front thread, 9 rounded aperture blades, 10 elements. Heavy as hell, sharp as piss, incredible bokeh, incredible rendition, great micro contrast, incredible depth of field, contrast, vibrance, cl clarity, contrast. Wow. And it's Chinese. <laughs> you know, I'm all the time complaining about China. You know, Apple MacBooks are made in China. I mean, I never at any point in time assumed that everything out of China is like, you know, second rate crap compared to it usually is because we think of like uh, crap from Walmart, you know, made in China. It's like, oh, it's crap. <laughs> you know it's true. You know it's true. By the way, something really funny about this company, you need to go to their website and then go on to the about page, like the technical specification page of Zhongyi Optics. It's really, 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 really funny. Really funny. Even though it's a Chinese company, be like, yeah, we do great stuff and but they emphasize over and over again that we make stuff on Japanese equipment. We build the lenses the Japanese way. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's so ridiculous. It would be like an American company because, you know, American cars are crap compared to Japanese cars. They're like Ford Motor Company. And you went to the page on, like, how you build Ford cars. And, it's, uh, and on the Ford page it said, we build cars the Japanese way. We build them on Japanese robots in Japan. <laughs> it would be like, that's weird. That's weird. <laughs> they ought to fix that on their website. They're like, it's a Chinese company. It's like, you know, be proud of what you do. Because I'm... This is, you know, other than MacBooks, which roll out of China, under really tight quality control, there's not really anything that comes out of China that anybody will say, this is as good as something made in Japan. And certainly not better, you know. No, Japanese quality. But this lens is just incredible. It's like, well, this isn't a Fujifilm lens. This lens is so damn good, girlfriend, that I have to include it in my top five because it is that damn good. This is one of those lenses where if you're asked a question, it's like, if you could only have one lens, and I don't mind manual focus. If you're complaining about manual focus, considering the fact you got focus peaking in your Fuji X-T1, X-T2, X-Pro2, you're an idiot. If you can only have one lens and it had to be permanently glued to your Fujifilm, this would, even though it has no autofocus, which I don't give a damn about, this would be arguably right up there in top two lenses that I would have permanently glued to my Fujifilm camera. 
Don't you love the cute little box it comes in? It's not real leather, but it it's really cool. You, nobody else gives you a little box like this. Not I mean, not that that has anything to do with anything. Wow, this lens is so good. Um, so those are my top five Fujifilm Prime lenses, even though one of them is not a Fujifilm. 90mm f2, 16mm 1.4, 56 millimeter 1.2 and the 50 millimeter f2 really really hesitant to get this lens i'm so glad i did it's really inexpensive too by the way i think everybody should buy the damn you know i'll admit when i'm wrong i always do honest lens reviews everybody should buy the 50 millimeter f2 because it's cheap it's awesome it's incredible love it this lens is actually the one that's really always sitting on my fujifilm xt2 now Last trip I took, I only took one lens, and it was this one. Served the bill for most everything. That's the only lens I had, so obviously it had to do, had to, did have to serve the bill. So there you go. I hope that you like this video. If you do, you can drop me a buck or two as a sign of appreciation. Because I feel like I'm unofficial Fujifilm tech support. Just before I made this video, I got three Fujifilm tech support questions. And I answered all three of them, and everybody was happy, 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 happy. So apparently I must be like the unpaid tech support for Fujifilm. It's like, yeah, yeah I'm going to ask the fat tattooed guy. He's always got the answer for Fujifilm. Uh, <laughs> this is true. This is true. i got to tell you this. I, these are really great guys. I, I got this part for the new GFX. I won't tell you which part it is. And I called up Fujifilm asking a question. And... Uh, it, it was the one time I asked Fujifilm tech support, and I'm not complaining about Fujifilm tech support. It was a new part for the GFX camera. And I was like, I got this part, and I was asking a question about it. It's like, we haven't even got that part yet, so you're going to have to find out about that and report back to us. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I knew more. I was, uh, that's pretty funny. At least I think it's kind of funny. Don't you think it's funny? I, I thought it was funny. So there we go with that. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, catch you later. And Fuji!